I don't know. I never thought I'd get this far. I didn't think it was possible, but it seems like Gaijin have actually listened to the player base for once. Granted, it took incessant review bombing and a lot of content creators standing up, but still. And these don't seem to be the typical Gaijin monkey's paw wish, where yeah, you do get what you wanted, but you also get something terrible, which outweighs it. These seem to be a lot of good changes with no obvious downsides, at least for most of them. Now it is important to notice this part in their dev blog. This may lead to having to modify or revert some or all of these changes, if we realize that they are just not working in the live game. Now this is a pretty reasonable expectation. If it's actively sabotaging the game, then it obviously shouldn't be in it. However, it also gives them an excuse to not keep up with their promises. Now, I'm not too worried about this, because even if only a quarter of these changes actually get into the game, it's still a ton of positive change. They do say they intended to introduce these changes all along, and that the freakout basically just expedited it, but I don't believe that. If this was actually their intention all along, they could have just released their longer, original roadmap and people would have loved it, but they obviously didn't. Also, some of these changes are pretty contradictory to what we got earlier, so... But yeah, let's take a look at what they're actually proposing here. They do outright admit that SL gain was really bad and they did a poor job of addressing it. And they finally addressed the phenomenon where they will raise the repair cost of a good vehicle, driving off the average players, so only the really good players can maintain a positive balance while playing it, meaning that the stats stay high and its repair costs can go up even further. But yeah, the meat and potatoes of this change is that basically most vehicles will see a reduction to their repair costs and then it increase their SL multiplier meaning that earnings will probably go way up across the board. Instead of certain vehicles having a way higher repair cost compared to vehicles of the same rank, repair costs will now be more or less equalized across a given tier. Personally, I think this is a great change. I've always figured that if a given vehicle is performing too well, you should put it at a higher BR. You shouldn't keep it at the same BR but give it a higher repair cost so people spawn it less. Because the people that face it are still having a really bad time, and the people that do play the given vehicle will not only have higher skill, they'll probably play a bit more conservatively, meaning that in most circumstances they'll probably do better. It is important to note this is a change you can vote for, so if you haven't already you should go to the news post and do that. The next change is a bit weird. To put it simply, it means that if you have premium you can't go negative in a battle. Negative in terms of SL gain, I mean. This idea seemed a bit out of left field, but if you think about it, it's a great incentive to actually buy premium. Even if you only go negative once in every six games, it's still a pretty significant boost to your income. This is one change I think Gaijin will certainly implement. It's positive for the players and will probably get them more money, so why not? I have seen some people speaking out against this particular change, saying it will allow players to just play with their brain off and throw games, but the people that are consistently going negative even with premium probably aren't the brightest players anyway. Like, I really don't think this is going to affect your average player. I think most people recognize that it's more profitable to stay longer in a match than just running right in, dying, getting maybe one or two kills and leaving. Especially considering how activity works, but I guess we'll see. I'm also a pretty big fan of this next change. Basically, it means that if your vehicle gets destroyed like five seconds into a match, your repair cost won't be as great. I think this change is pretty great because if you get a streak of three games or so where you just die right off the bat without doing anything, it's pretty frustrating. And this could reduce some of that frustration. I am curious to see how significant these reductions will actually be, but generally this is a pretty good change. Gaijin then goes on to say that all of the previous changes will apply to premium vehicles as well, which I think most people assumed, including me, but it's good to clarify. However, they also say that premium vehicles will now get a set of backups. This is a change I've been thinking about proposing for quite a while now, and while I do think it could backfire in some circumstances, namely overpowered premiums a la the 2S38, I do think this is a net positive change. For players that buy their way in the top tier, it should be especially helpful, and beneficial to their teams. Instead of having a lineup with one M1 KVT and an M22 Locust, you could have three M1 KVTs. Next is something I really wasn't expecting, they also seem to be adding a Halo-style betrayal mechanic. Basically, if someone accidentally kills you, you can't forgive them, but if you think it was intentional, you can boot them from the game. I do think this is a good system, but I wonder how closely it'll follow Halo. If you accidentally kill someone once, does that mean they can boot you from the game? Or is it something that happens with multiple instances? I think we could use some clarification on that. Next, they're making capture points sort of like Battlefield, where even if you don't live to cap the point fully, you still get points for being on it. Again, this is a pretty simple and good change, and I'm surprised it's taken this long to get it into the game. Well, it's not in yet, but you know what I mean. I think this will do a lot to incentivize more objective play. You'll notice in a lot of my videos, I usually avoid caps unless they're completely clear, but that might change with this. 
Next is adding a more detailed breakdown of how your RP and SL are calculated, which I personally don't care for much. I mean, it's not a bad change, I just don't think it's something I'll use very often. I'm sure this will be useful for people that want to min-max their SL gains, but I really don't care. Next is probably the largest and most significant change. Basically, not only will Gaijin folder more vehicles in the tech tree, but those foldered vehicles will cost much less to research. In fact, they want to apply a 50% reduction. That is huge. As Gaijin notes, this will have a double whammy effect. Not only will it make the grind significantly easier, especially for Israel, which is half Magok, but it will incentivize players to research more foldered vehicles. If I could guarantee one change gets into the game, it would probably be this. I think this would definitely have the largest positive impact. Hopefully this will discourage people from leaving after one death, and you know, actually trying to make a full lineup. Next is making rank 6 and 7 aircraft easier to grind, which I personally don't care for, so I won't touch on it. They do say they wanted to do this for both aircraft and ground, but decided to prioritize air, which doesn't make much sense to me because I feel like the grind for tanks is way worse. But it's also not a negative change, so I can't complain. Next is something I'm a huge fan of. Basically, the more kills you get, the more RP you'll get. In this example, destroying 3 tanks gets you a 15% RP bonus, 6 tanks gets you 30%, and 9 tanks gets you 50%. This specific example is for arcade, I imagine RB will be different, but I would love something like this. As an example, there was one game I played recently where I got like 10 kills, and we lost the game, so I got basically no RP. And my RP gain was basically the same as if I had gotten like 5 kills. I think this change will encourage less passive gameplay, which would be great, so hopefully it actually gets into the game. And last is bonuses for researching new in-game nations. They note that veteran players tend not to research new nations that are added, and I can personally attest to that. After France was added, I really couldn't be bothered to grind new nations. In particular, my Italian tech tree looks very sad. Israel is probably the one major exception. So basically, when a new nation is added, from rank 4 to rank 8 there will be research bonuses, with the bonuses increasing the higher you get. They do note this is subject to change, but frankly I think any bonus would be good. In the roadmap dev blog, they mention some additional changes. With the new update, night battles are disabled, and in the next update you can choose to enable them. I don't know about you guys, but personally I will leave the option disabled. I think they encourage very passive gameplay, and I just don't enjoy them very much. Also, my monitor still freaks out when using NVD. They talk about improving the balance of late Cold War era vehicles, which I assume means decompression for like 6.7 to 8.7. In my opinion, this is desperately needed. 6.7 is an absolute hellscape right now. Strike drones got moved up in BR with the last update. I think they should be removed entirely. They are just not necessary at all and not good for gameplay. Low caliber heat will be getting buffed soon. I wish this would apply to low caliber APFS DS as well, but tough luck I guess. Commander Override will have a delay. This is something I've been advocating for for a very long time, and I would be very happy if they actually add this. Decorations will be destructible, meaning you can shoot bushes off of tanks. I think you should just be able to hide them if you don't want to see them, but this is fine I guess. And those were the most significant changes mentioned in that particular dev blog, at least in my opinion. So yeah, overall these are very positive changes. I don't think there was anything that was outright negative. Some changes could have some minor side effects, but I don't think they'll have a very large impact. It is nice that Gaijin seems to be listening, finally. A lot of these changes seem to come directly from the CC Discord, but some of them I've never seen anywhere. Because of that, I feel like Gaijin knows how to improve their game, but they haven't really focused on it before because it didn't make them as much money. Now that their income is threatened, they feel obligated to do so. Anyway, what do you guys think? Like I said before, even if only a quarter of these changes actually get in, it's still a huge positive. Anyway, if you guys have suggestions for video topics, leave them in the comments, and I'll see you on the next one.